We have Oklahoma State, number 23, still holding on there after getting absolutely blown out uh, last week. A seven-point road favorite at Houston. This game carries an over-under 59.5 points. It kicks off at 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. The reason I wanted to bring this game up, because you may look at it and say, wow, Oklahoma State, Houston, whoa, great. Uh, I think that there was a very steep reaction to last week's outcome. Uh, and it was a very shocking outcome, of course. Like, you know, we pointed out, hey, this is a huge letdown spot for Oklahoma State. Watch out. And guess what? It turned out to be, but to the degree of getting beat 45 to 3 on the road. Shocking to me. But I've seen a lot of discourse on Twitter about this guy. Um, and I've, I want to bring something up that people have not been talking about. Ollie Gordon's been hurt, guys. He was in and out of the Bedlam game, but he played against UCF. Tough kid, but he was seriously limited. Just 12 carries. That and also, you know, Oklahoma State was getting crushed. So they had to throw the ball. But, you know, how does he look coming into this week? I've been keeping an eye on practice reports. Haven't seen a lot of uh, updates around him. But, guys, we're docking him for going 12 for 25 last week. But again, he was super hurt. I don't know why that's been thrown to the wayside. But, hey, another week to get healthy here. I'm going to be honest. I laid the seven with Oklahoma State. I uh, boy, I've been taking a lot of road favorites, and I don't like that. I don't like betting road favorites, but uh, Oklahoma State laying the points for me. I subscribe to the theory that good teams have bad games, just like you talked about with Tennessee on the road at Missouri. The market is so quick to discard these teams the second that they lose, and I have a couple more of these teams on, on our docket today to talk about. They had four turnovers, which is far above their season average. They didn't have their explosive borderline Heisman-worthy back healthy it was a big letdown spot like we highlighted. It was just kind of a, a perfect storm walking into UCF the first time they played in the state of Florida in, in 18 years in the regular season or whatever. And when you're talking about college games and college kids, something that doesn't really happen so much in the NFL, but happens a lot in college, um, and I think it's accentuated if you watch college baseball. It, uh, when things get ugly, they get ugly. And games get away from these players. We saw it with Georgia Ole Miss. The second you fall behind and realize, oh crap, I'm getting really beat. College kids are not the most uh, uh, resilient. The, it, it's harder to bounce back when you get dejected like that with all the things going against you. This, to me, is a game that just got away from Oklahoma State. It just happens. Are we going to say Ole Miss is now terrible because they just gave up 52 points? No, I don't think so. That's a game that got away from them and got progressively worse as it went on. Anyway, Oklahoma State has an opportunity to turn things back around and they still hold tiebreakers over head-to-head -head tiebreakers over Kansas State and Oklahoma. So Big 12 championship game, man, is in their grasp. If they that, win out, they make Arlington. That matters now, Brett, because previously yeah. <laughs> under the prior interpretation, because Oklahoma and Kansas State hadn't played, that head-to-head -head wouldn't come into to play. Now the Big 12's clarified. It does come into play. Yes. I know fan bases are upset about that. As someone who's not Shouldn't invested, be. as someone who's not Come invested on. in this, like I don't have a team in this fight, I think that where we landed now is the right place to be. Yes. Uh, I don't think the head-to-head should be nullified just because Oklahoma and Kansas State didn't play. But again, I work at a conference office. Like I, I know how this stuff goes and how it works. It's a tough spot for that conference to be making a clarification, as they called it, at this stage of the game. You, you like to have the rules set. And everybody knows what they are before any games are played in any sport. It's tough to make a clarification at this time, but ultimately you need to make tough decisions to get to the right outcomes. And I think we've landed in the right spot in this case as someone who's not invested one way or the other. Yeah. And I've, I've brought this up whenever I talk about Oklahoma state that Mike Gundy has more nine plus win seasons than he does losing seasons in the almost 20 years that he's been in Oklahoma state. He's a very good coach, hard stop. And if you think that, He's got a path to Arlington. If you just win your final two games, you get in. I have to imagine this team is going to be absolutely dialed in walking into Houston. And to be honest, Houston is just not a very good football team all the way around. They're awful against pass, 112th in EPA. Alan Bowman hasn't had to do much aside from last week where he threw three picks and it wasn't great. But when Ollie Gordon gets going, it opens up the passing game too. And Alan Bowman's been relatively efficient, uh, especially when it's not all him and, and him being asked to do everything. On the other side, though, for the Cougars, Matthew Golden, they're, they're a terrific, dynamic wide receiver, really good return man. He is out for the season, so they're down one of their better players. This team really can't afford too many injuries to those skill players because, well, to put it frankly, they're bad. Uh, they, they're, they're lacking depth and talent. Um, when I was looking at the aggregate of power ratings, I have a pack of eight teams right in the middle of the Big 12 that are all within two points of each other, and then Houston's kind of that first team that falls 
below that mess. Uh, they have a little bit of a ways to go, at, at least my aggregated power ratings. The offense completely disappeared against Cincinnati. They had just a 33% success rate, three turnovers, and in their last three games, shut out by Kansas State. They needed overtime to muster 25 points against Baylor's defense, which is not great. And uh, then they posted just 14 points at home against Cincinnati. Uh, Houston's a full-on fade team for me. Outside of the emotionally charged Dana Holgerson Bowl against West Virginia, which was that Hail Mary finish, whole lot of fun. The Cougars have just been absolutely dismal. I, I think that this is still a team that can be very successful in the Big 12 moving forward because they're in such a hotbed of recruiting. One of the best. If you're not talking about Southern California, if you're not talking about the, the Miami-Dade County area, uh, Houston is, is where the talent is at. So I think this team will be okay in the long run, but right now they're not. Um, and to be honest, they might be a Cancun team. And so this is Oklahoma State for me. Oklahoma State's on a mission. Houston really doesn't have anything left to play for. Uh, I don't trust Dana Holgerson as far as I can throw him. What say you? Scorched Earth mode, Cancun team. These are just great. End of the year, phrases. Kelly. <laughs> These are great <laughs> phrases, Brett, that I absolutely love. Listen, uh, we you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. And I talked last week about how all the green on Oklahoma State's dashboard, like in every single category, that usually means the team is going to regress. And regress the Cowboys did a lot, Brett, as you talked about. Only Arkansas was downgraded more than Oklahoma State in this week's power rating update. Cowboys fell 2.5 points. That's significant for this late in the season. But what do we expect after a week of big regression? Progression. Back to the mean a little bit here. With that being said, my numbers actually kind of have this similar to Vegas. I have Oklahoma State minus 6 in this game. It's a 66% win expectancy. Again, you can talk about what's the home field advantage mean for a team that's in Cancun mode. Um, which <laughs> I just can't get over it. That's great. My numbers give Oklahoma State the advantage on both sides of the ball in this game. The Cowboys offense, this is the best unit on the field. They're at number 35 for me. Um, and it's a unit that should be licking its chops because at number 101, this Houston team possesses the worst opposing defense that the Pokes will face all season based on my current numbers. To make matters worse, Worst for Houston, the Cougars offense is currently ranked a season worst number 60. Uh, I know what you just said about uh, the Cancun team. Technically, Houston is still fighting for a bowl bid. Being at home should, in theory, help. But at the end of the day, I think Oklahoma State bounces back, gets the win to stay in this crowded Big 12 race. And again, when I kind of made my notes for this game, I didn't have the updated context about what this clarification means. It's not quite as crowded as it, as it appears for Oklahoma State, given this news about the head to head. Um, so it's it's not necessarily clear cut, but it's also not quite as crowded for them in particular if they just take care of their business. It's a big if. It's hard to win games in college football, absolutely. But Oklahoma State's proven they can win big games this year. They need to avoid stubbing their toe as they've done a couple times. Bottom line, I have Oklahoma State minus six. It's a thirty four percent chance that Houston earns their earns the upset and their first meeting between these teams, Brett. Since 2009. They've, they're at Houston this week, like we just highlighted, and they're home against BYU. Like, it's not an exaggeration to say that this bid to Arlington is Oklahoma State's to lose. Give me one second. Let me pull up. Let me let me pull up my uh, my dashboard for Oklahoma State real quick and see what I have. Their chances. I have them with a fifty three percent chance yeah. to win both of these games. So yeah, fifty three percent chance to get there on the tiebreaker front, though. Brett, they also um, yeah, Iowa State still five and two. Now again, Iowa State has some games coming up here uh, against Texas and Kansas State, so that's going to be difficult. But Iowa State did beat Oklahoma State for whatever that's worth. Iowa State still even on the number of losses in conference play as Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. However, you look at their chances here. I have it as a 97% chance that they lose at least one of those games. So yes, for all intents and purposes, Oklahoma State certainly in a very good spot. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better way to wrap up the, the Big 12 season for them. If you're in a position and, and you need to have two games, uh, aside from Baylor, Houston and BYU are probably the two teams you handpick. And even then, you probably still pick BYU and Houston over Baylor, because Baylor's been a conference mate for so long. I, I know they're they're playing really bad football right now, but couldn't couldn't ask for a better setup for Oklahoma State here. What a, what a roller coaster of a season that would be to see them in Arlington. 